Good afternoon. Jennifer uh, seems to like at these events to put me in the position to be the spoiler and break up all this amazing conversation that's going on around the room. Uh, welcome again. Um, I'm Doug Eastry. I'm the Associate Provost for Undergraduate Education and Dean of Undergraduate Studies here at Michigan State University. Uh, I would also like to welcome you on behalf of Dean Cynthia Jackson Elmore. Uh, Cynthia was to be your MC today and uh, is ill and, unfor and unfortunately can't be here, so she sends her regrets. And unfortunately for you all, uh, you're stuck with me. So anyway, because I, I had to step in here. So uh, celebrating our scholarships and uh, donors and creating an opportunity for many of you to me uh, for these amazing young people that you've been having a chance to talk with is really exactly for me the right way to start off homecoming weekend. So I think this is fantastic. And for those of you that have not been here before, it's amazing how much this has grown. Uh, once again this year, I'd like to thank uh, a few people. First, you've met already Jennifer Bertram, our senior development officer. Uh, Maura Benton, Maura, where are you? Please, please, over that way. Maura, thank you. Uh, Katie McMurray, I don't know if Katie is here. Um, and Katie Kelly, where's Katie? Way over there, thank you, Katie. Um, and Amber Trudell, is Amber in the room? Hi, Amber, thank you very much. These people do an amazing job of helping us every year put this together. I would also like to thank um, our musicians uh, this afternoon. One of them was able to stay for lunch. Uh, graduate students in the, the College of Music, and they, they do an amazing job, as you all well know. As I noted, I remember when I first started attending the scholarships and fellowship luncheons, it was much smaller uh, than it is right now. And if you look around the room now, what you see is an impressive, uh, as far as I'm concerned, testament to the generosity of Spartans. Your understanding that without deep learning, we can't have a great country. Your understanding that without deep learning, we can't solve the complex problems that now challenge the world. You all, as far as I'm concerned, see that. And you all deserve a great amount of credit for choosing to do something about it. Thank you very much. I would like to take a moment to introduce uh, some additional people, a few uh, MSU administrators and faculty who are also scholarship donors and have joined us today. Uh, in a minute, uh, Dr. Uh, Ewitt will be joining us at the podium to speak. Um, Dr. Ewitt is the provost and executive vice president of Michigan State University. And I was looking over here, but now she's over here. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Judith Stoddard, uh, Interim Associate Provost for Graduate Education and Dean of the Graduate School, who will be greeting you uh, shortly. Judith is down here. Uh, Bob Groves, our Vice President for University Advancement. We've had the pleasure for a number of years of working very closely with Bob. Uh, Rick Shipman, who is the Director of the Office of Financial Aid, and that's the office that makes sure that we appropriately steward all of the, the resources that you have made available to us for scholarships and fellowships. And Pauline Adams, who is the First Lady Emeritus of MSU and a longtime scholarship donor. Pauline, thank you again for being with us this year. Whenever I do these introductions, I worry because there are many other current uh, and former faculty and administrators who are here today who are also supporting scholarships and fellowships. So thank you all um, for joining us. As Associate Provost and Dean, I've had the distinct pleasure for a number of years of working closely um, with uh, Dr. Hewitt. Dr. Hewitt serves, as I indicated, as the MSU Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. And I was very excited uh, a number of years ago when she was selected to be the next provost of Michigan State University because if all of you have been watching, she is doing an amazing job uh, transforming MSU and looking to the future, helping us um, make changes that will both enhance the undergraduate experience here at Michigan State University as well as the graduate and research presence of this institution. 
So it um, gives me a great deal of pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Dr. June Pierce Hewitt. Thank you, June. Well, uh, to those of you who are here with us today, I, I just want to say welcome home. Um, it is homecoming, and I think that many of you in this room have the same sense that I have when you turn into campus and you see the iconic buildings and uh, the activity of the students walking across the street and the trees that line our streets and the carolin begins to chime and there is something deep inside that says you're back, you're back home. And it feels good. Um, this homecoming, as you're seated uh, at tables with the next generation of Spartans, probably a lot of the conversation was about what they are planning and where they come from and how their school year is going and what their plans for the future are, and that's as it should be, uh, looking forward. But homecoming, um, whether we always acknowledge it or not, uh, finds us doing some reminiscing, thinking about when we were here and when this was our second or third or first four weeks at Michigan State University. And I think that you will agree that as you look back, those of you who are our, our donors and guests, uh, that a great deal uh, is just as it was when you were here. There are things that are still in the same places and there are experiences that are common about uh, trying to figure out who you are in this big place and, and trying to forge friendships and having this sense that you hope you can do this um, is this the class that will work or won't work? Is this the faculty member who is inspiring you or challenging you uh, or failing you? Um, all of those feelings you had, you know, sitting in row three, um, wondering how this was all going to turn out. But when you look around the room, you see how it turned out. You see how it turned out. You see the lives um, that have been molded by Michigan State University. You think about your successes, about your friendships, about the places that you've been, the people that you know, the ideas that you had in this place that really changed the entire course of your life. Uh, that was a story that uh, I had to hear frequently. Um, I married uh, almost 40 years ago a Spartan. Uh, we didn't know each other in school. He was, uh, he was graduated uh, five or six years ahead of me and had already gone off to law school by the time I came here as a freshman. But I had to always hear this story about his life as a Spartan. And he and I had very different uh, paths. I was, I was, well, I'll just tell you, in high school I was voted the apple polisher, which you know what that means. I was the good girl that sat in the front, did my homework, and wrote neatly, right? And he was the rowdy boy. And uh, so in high school, obviously went to very different schools and different places, but he was the rowdy boy, and, and his guidance counselor just said to him, you know, I'm just not sure you're a, high, you're a college material. And that was all you really had to say to him to get him going, and so indeed he did make it to Michigan State University, and he uh, was a, a, an English uh, major. Uh, as an undergraduate, an American history master's degree before he went on and did his uh, law degree. But the stories that I heard uh, about his early years as a Spartan, I had stories too, but I didn't hardly get to tell mine because he was the rowdy boy. Um, <laughs> and mine were a lot quieter. Uh, but uh, his were about the, the fun that he had at MSU and the people that he knew and the games that he went to. But the better stories, the ones that were endearing and enduring, were the ones about the times and the places on this campus that really changed his life. The faculty members that he met, that he so admired, the people um, that um, helped him see what was most important in his life, um, the people who inspired him to really a life of um, service and helped him understand community service in the broadest sense. Uh, the people who helped him see that through his skills he could actually shape and transform uh, the lives of families, which is why he became a family law attorney. Um, this young man who maybe wasn't quite college material. 
if there's any irony at all, it is that he eventually returned to the same community where he graduated from high school and became the attorney for the school district where he was told he probably wasn't college material. Um, I always thought there was just a little element of revenge in that. But, um, uh, but, but the stories about Dr. Williams in history and the stories about his writing instructor in his first semester, and those are the stories that I had to hear and then our children had to hear. And, uh, as they grew older, the stories about his rowdiness seemed to sort of fall off, and the emphasis on Dr. Williams really increased as our kids got older. Uh, but um, this place was, was important to him. It was important to me as a 17-year-old as uh, walking onto this campus for the first time. And um, I'm going to try to tell this story without the emotion that often comes with it, but that's probably... Never mind. Just pretend like you don't notice, okay? Um, when he passed away, um, one of the conversations that the children and I had very, um, very early was how how do we how do we keep Dad in the middle of all of this? How do we keep him with us? Um, and it took us about two minutes to say, you know, we need to do a scholarship. We need to do a scholarship for undergraduate students at um, Michigan State University because that was so central to who he was. His loyalty to the institution, his stories about the institution, and what he did with his life because of this institution is the way that we remember who he was. And so uh, that's, uh, that resulted in the establishment of our undergraduate scholarship. And I'm very proud, our, our fifth recipient is, is with us today. Um, unlike the person uh, whose name she is um, uh, enjoying, um, no one ever told her she wasn't college material. Um, <laughs> uh, and in fact, she and Bill Hewitt probably would not have sat on the same side of the classroom because she was with, she would have been with me up in the front <laughs> row. Yeah, um, it's, it's an honor uh, to be able to help another student. Uh, my husband could not have gone to MSU without some financial help, and I suspect that um, his story has been retold over and over and over and over again. Uh, the individual who needed a leg up, needed a little encouragement, and uh, when they walk through that door, um, everything changed, not just for them, not just for their family, but for all of the lives that they touched. It's, it's his story. In many ways, it's my story. Uh, and I suspect that it's many of your stories. And I want to take the opportunity to just thank you so much. I, you know, I sit and look at some of you, and I know how many students that you've helped. Um, we have done just a small thing, so I don't want to I, not for a minute, want to put us in front of you and say, look what we have done. Uh, I guess what I want to say is I understand, in part, why you do what you do. Uh, because the ability uh, to be able to do for someone what someone has done for you, I really feel like loving this place, uh, believing in Michigan State University, believing in who we are and what we do and why we do it, if that really is who you are, it's really a lot bigger than a green and white flag in front of your house on a game day. It's a lot bigger than a lapel pin or a shout or uh, the kinds of things that people think is part of being a Spartan. Those are all fun things, and I'm glad people like them. You know, if you want to put a Spartan sweater on your dog, go for it. <laughs> but for me, being a Spartan is really honoring the legacy of this place. And there is something about being here and being part of this family that suggests that um, it's a kind of covenant that what was done for us and with us, now we have an opportunity to do with and for others. All of you know that. All of you were doing it. And I just want to tell you, as someone who every day is responsible for so many of these young people, these amazing, amazing young people who are going to do things, some of the people in this room are going to do things that I can't imagine, but they have the capacity to do it. And they're going to do it because all of you have done what you have done. Thank you.
Thank, thank you very much, uh, June, for those real heartfelt comments. I, m I must say publicly that I have been fortunate, as I indi indicated earlier, to work and learn with June for many years, and I am particularly fortunate um, now to work for and learn from June. She may have said to you she was the uh, apple polisher. She is a quiet leader in one sense, but she but her messages and her ideas are felt throughout the institution. So thank you, June, for giving me the opportunity to work with you over the years. Um, I often have the distinct pleasure of meeting with alumni uh, and donors from around the country, and I never cease to be impressed with the generosity, their deep commitment to MSU, people like Dr. Hewitt, and their willingness to support in many ways MSU students. One of those couples is Alan and Julie Britton, Alan graduated from MSU in 1959 with a bachelor's degree in dairy from the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Julie holds two degrees from MSU, earning her bachelor's degree in elementary education in 1962 and her master's degree in education in 1967. Uh, they married uh, and later settled in Adrian, Michigan, where Alan was the president of the local bank for many years. In 2001, Alan and Julie created the Britain Scholarship, which is awarded each year to incoming students with academic merit from Leelanau County, from, excuse me, Lenaway County. Since uh, establishing the scholarship in 2001, Alan and Julie has supported 15 students with scholarships totaling over $75,000. So please join me in welcoming Alan to the stage. Good afternoon. Got a little spark. I am honored and humbled to be asked to speak here today. In 1955, the fall of 1955, I became a Spartan. A few years before that happened, I didn't think I would ever go to college because I didn't know how I was going to be able to afford to do so. But with the help and encouragement of a fellow, uh, a former teacher, and a small 4-H scholarship, which I earned, landed me here in East Shaw Hall to begin to get a formal education. But I also knew that it was not going to be more than, it was not going to be just going to school and studying. I was going to have to work. So I picked up dirty dishes at the dormitory, at the uh, student union in the uh, cafeteria. I slung hash in the, in the, uh, uh, to students in the, in, in the club bars. I uh, set pins at the bowling alley, which is in the basement of the student union. I assume that the bowling alley is still there. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it, today, I know it had automatic pin setters. When I was there, <laughs> it did not. I was the pin setter. <laughs> I also delivered pizza for a pizzeria in East Lansing. Uh, this is what helped me get through school. A question to some of you here who may be almost as old as I am. Do you remember what was across the hall, or across the street from Shaw Hall, Shaw Lane? Anybody know? Shaw Bar. On the screen, I think there's pictures of inside the cow barn as well. Not now. Yeah. Yeah. 
You have to see the inside of the cow barn. <laughs> The cow barn. <laughs> well, okay. The, what you're not seeing is a big job that I had. <laughs> of cleaning out behind the cows. <laughs> in the cow barn. I didn't have to go through a lot of training to do it. <laughs> having come from a dairy farm. So maybe I was the teacher, possibly. But that's some of the things that I did to get myself through school. Now, I don't want any of you to believe that I didn't have some fun as well. I, I am a sports nut, and I enjoy sports. And so I participated in uh, the intramural programs on campus. Um, I uh, never missed a football game or a basketball game. Um, I'm also reminded uh, tomorrow is homecoming, and um, some of you can also remember there was a, um, a band shell across the street from the auditorium. And on uh, Friday nights before the football games, uh, we'd gather at the band shell, a pep, a pep uh, band would be there, and the cheerleaders, and Duffy Doherty would come up on the stage and speak to us. That was really a lot of fun, and we really enjoyed that. So after spending four years here, and I discovered that the world is out there for me, just go out and get it. I had matured and grown up a little bit, and so we went out to do that. Got married, had kids, jobs, and we began to make donations to this university. The first five or six years, we parted with $5. I got up to about 1970, we doubled that to $10 a year. But it was always there. It was always what we thought we could do. And then as time passed, we were able to do better and better and better. So then when we were able to uh, establish the scholarship, I didn't realize at the time how it would affect me when I actually saw the scholarships being given out. Words, excuse me, words do not describe the feeling when you see those kids and you meet them and they grow our future leaders. So that's my story. A little reminiscing. I'd like to pass on just a couple little uh, helpful hints to those of you, those students here. When you go out and leave this university after your formal education and get a job and start your careers and then you're able to accumulate a little bit, don't forget how you got there. And also, when you're, make, when you're in that career in wherever you live, whatever community, become a member of that community. It takes a lot of people in good communities to make it work. It, you can have a, big titles uh, and do great things in, in jobs, but you've got to be part of a community to make that community grow there are needs in all communities, and be part of it, because that will fulfill your life. And then for the rest of us who are a little longer in the age, take a few minutes and examine where you are, and maybe we could give just a little bit more. Thank you very much.
Thank you again, Alan. I'm pleased now to welcome one of the recipients of the Britain Scholarship, Abby Carpenter, to, to speak with us. Abby is a senior from Adrian, Michigan, pursuing a degree in agribusiness management. So please join me in welcoming Abby. Hi, everybody. I've been asked today to share my story about being a Spartan. So it all started in Adrian, Michigan, where I grew up on my family's farm. We do about 1,200 acres of row crops, operate an agritourism business in the fall where we have hay rides, corn maize, and sell pumpkins, and where we have a small herd of beef cows. To say the least, my family likes to stay busy. But even as a young child, I was always expected to be a part of helping my family make a living. Even before school, I was expected to get up, feed cows, spend all day at school, go to cross-country practice after school, come home, feed cows again, much like Al over here, clean up after the cows. <laughs> then go eat a picnic dinner where my dad was out combining, come home after dark, and finally be able to start homework for the day. To say the least, I kind of had a love-hate relationship with the farm, but in the end, agriculture has always been my biggest passion, which means choosing a major and a school was pretty easy for me. So here I am at the Pioneer Land Grant University because where else would you want to study agriculture? Majoring in agribusiness management with a minor in crop and soil sciences with the career aspirations to go home and be part of the fifth generation to run my family's farm. <laughs> so obviously some of these decisions came pretty easily to me, but figuring out how to pay for college wasn't so easy. After all, my older brother was also in college at the time, and to say the least, my parents could not afford to put two of us through four years of education. And I had some savings from 4-H projects, but um, I spent most of my free time working on the farm for free. So, <laughs> didn't have much. So like many of you out here today, I turned to scholarships. My freshman year, I filled out over 50 scholarships, just hoping to get a handful. Much to my surprise, most of my freshman year was covered. I continued to apply, then most of my sophomore year was covered. Finally, all of my junior year and all of my senior year covered. So to all of you students out here, keep applying. Realize that getting an education doesn't mean that you have to leave with tons and tons of debt. Here I am, 219 days away from graduation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, on track to graduate with high honors, and I have zero student debt. And it's all possible thanks to all of the wonderful donors sitting amongst, amongst us today. So to my wonderful donors, Al and Julie, and to all of the rest of you out here today, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to continue to gain experience, gain experience on my family's farm without having to work a second or third job trying to pay for college. Thank you for having faith in us. Thank you for your investment into our education and into our future. Thank you for allowing us to pursue our passion and dreams. From each and every one of us, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be Spartans. Go green. Thank you, Abby, and thank you, Alan, for sharing your stories with us today. I'm Judith Stoddart. I'm the Interim Associate Provost for Graduate Education and the Dean of the Graduate School at Michigan State. And it's my pleasure to be here with all of you, with the donors, with the students. We had wonderful conversation at our table learning about all of the things that the students will be doing um, now and, and in the future. And I know a lot of you have great futures in front of you. I also came to Michigan State as an undergraduate and also graduated debt-free with the benefit of many different scholarships and also, it might not look like it now, but work as a steel worker during the summers <laughs> to put my way through college. Um, so I know how much this aid means to all of you. And I'm also a faculty member at Michigan State, and I have the incredible privilege of teaching um, students like these um, that your support really helps and provides. And they are amazing, and they are inspirational. Um, I work with graduate fellows uh, who are also supported by 
funding, and they also are amazing, and they are going to be the leaders of the future. So thank you for your generous support that makes all of that possible and makes it a wonderful place and environment for all of us who work with these students to be and really see where the world is going to be going. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, we're currently in the middle of the Empower Extraordinary campaign, which is a $1.5 billion campaign for Michigan State. One of the key goals for this campaign is to increase, increase support for students at the graduate and undergraduate level. And in my mind, that's really appropriately where one of the emphases should be because that is the life of this university. Um, campaigns have become a way of life for, for public universities as support from the state and from federal governments has diminished over time. And these campaigns have become a vital way of ensuring that we remain a competitive university and one of the top universities, with top 100 universities in the world. Thanks to an anonymous gift sent to the university in 2010, we launched the Spartan Scholarship Challenge. This enhanced our opportunities to talk with Spartans all over the country about the need for student support, and many of you in this room were an important part of that campaign. Over the course of about a year and a half, 148 new scholarships created. As these scholarship endowments have grown, just five years later, almost 300 students have received a scholarship from this effort, and over $1.6 million have been awarded to students. As the Empower Extraordinary campaign continues, we look forward to seeing the impact on these students' lives that is made by your support. As donors to student scholarships and fellowships, each of you has had an impact at Michigan State University. You're helping to provide financial support, not only today for these students, but also to instill in them a philanthropic mindset. So just like you cared for their future, they will one day care enough to make a difference in a student, another student's future down the line. So we thank you all for your support of students at Michigan State. Uh, we hope you have a few more minutes to stay and, and talk and meet the people at your table and also maybe some people that you haven't met yet and fellow donors. And I don't know if we have anything else for it. So, so um, I'm happy to close and thank, say thank you again for being here. Enjoy this beautiful afternoon at Michigan State and uh, the weekend if you're here for the weekend. Thank you very much.